This is your time, my people, to receive my light and my glory. The world will get darker and darker. Yeah, the world will get worse and worse. But my glory will be shown upon you brighter and brighter. So fear not. Your time to arise and shine has come. That's in Isaiah 16. Many who have despised you will come running to you. And many who have overlooked you will come acknowledging you. I want you to just lift up your hands right now. Just receive. Just receive that glory. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Fear not, people of God. Fear not. Even though the world is getting darker, even though darkness surrounds the people, but as for you and I, for the beloved of God, for those who call on the name of Jesus, for those who call on the name of Yeshua, yes, we will arise and shine because our light has come and the glory of the Lord has come upon us. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's continue to pray the Spirit for all. Let's pray the Spirit. Is it, is it still in 
uh, in the in the law, okay? If you take up the mask in public place, you will get fined. Is it one thousand ringgit? Is it? I mean, if if I mean, many people actually, uh, I see they don't wear anymore. Some still wear, you know. Maybe if the government put it at ten thousand ringgit, fine. <laughs> Everybody will wear. <laughs> okay, just joking. Now, so we call it as apostolic and prophetic uh, conference gathering, and uh, we will keep you updated more and more. But today is very important. And I thank you for coming. We have friends, disciples from different parts. We have people coming from outside Penang. Thank you for coming. I can't mention all of you. Uh, but not everyone here is from Penang. Uh, some are our disciples and friends. We have many more people who want to come from different churches. But then you have your house churches, conventional churches, prophetic ministry, teaching ministry. This is a ministry to the body of Christ. But if you come from any church in Penang, please, please inform your pastor. Please let your pastor know or ask permission from your pastor. Okay? Uh, unless if you know that you are uh, part of our fellowship, then of course, uh, no need. But if you come from other churches as a protocol, please ask permission or inform your pastor. Unless if you are unchurched or you are under our spiritual covering. So for more information about our uh, ministry, you can go to Triumph in Christ Love today about. Yeah? Now, the next one, the Lord has been speaking very strongly. I got to say what God says. Amen? Prophetically. Uh, the next one, your key this year is to stay close to me. The Lord says, stay close to me and walk with me as I move, you move, as I stop, you stop. Like the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, you shall follow me. Now, that is the key. Somebody say the word key. Make this your first and foremost priority. I cannot emphasize more this year. Because this will be the year, the beginning of many falling away, of many believers. No, as I say, no holds barred. As I say, I'm not beating around the bush. This is also the year that God is continue to shake all His ministries, apostolic ministries, prophetic ministries. Every form of ministry, any form of ministry that has hidden motives, any form of ministry that has motivation apart from intimacy with God and pointing people to God instead of pointing people to themselves or wanting more views in YouTube or Instagram or Twitter or more followers. God is shaking. God is shaking. Especially, God is shaking the prophetic ministry. Last year, you know, in the year 2002, I was uh, asking the Lord you know, uh, about many things. I was talking to the Lord. I mean, the good thing about this time of lockdown is uh, I get to spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time just soaking, just spending time. And you know what the Lord says? Just watch and see. You say only what I tell you to say. Because I am dealing I am purifying, I am cleansing my body, I'm cleansing my pride, I'm preparing my pride so that me as a bridegroom uh, will want to come. You know, imagine if the bride is so dirty, the bride is, the bride is unkempt, the bride is like uh, 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 never prepared, never shower, never, never get ready. I mean, even the bridegroom want to come, the bridegroom say, what? What is that? I mean, if you have married before, you know what I mean, you know? On the day, your big day, you know? You got to wear your best. I still remember the, the day I married Pastor Sharon. Wow. I spent uh, almost two hours 
just on myself, my hair and everything. <laughs> I don't know, but she has a makeup artist who <laughs> those days. <laughs> How many years have you married? Twenty one. We got married in the year 2000, yeah. 221 years. 21 years. And we are blessed with a daughter. Wow, time flies. 18 years old already. This year, she's going to start driving. <laughs> time flies. Uh, and uh, praise the name of Jesus. So, God is getting ready to pray. Who is this bride? We are the bride. This is a key time. Without humility, we cannot be yielded to God. Without being yielded to God, we cannot walk closely to God. You see, it all ties up. It's a time of purifying. It's a time of sanctifying. I fear the Lord. So the Lord spoke to me last year, you just watch and see. Many prophets are going to eat their words. Many people are going to start to question prophetic ministry. I'm very sad. But the good thing that we all have learned is this. We better watch what we say. Because everything is in YouTube. I still remember in 1999 when people talked about Y2K, oh, going to be shut down, many prophecies. First of January 2000 came and went without any big incident. But I do respect some prophets who came up in the open after that. At that time, there was YouTube wasn't used much. There was not much, you know, that kind of thing like now. But I do respect some prophets who actually came up in the open and say, I'm sorry, I prophesied wrongly. There is no shame in that. We all learn. So last year the Lord just spoke to, to us, watch and see. You just say what you need to say, keep silent. And the Lord said to me further, it's a time of my refining fire, purifying. Because he is sifting, S I F T I N G, he is sifting those who are really for him, those who will never compromise him. Just last week I was teaching about Balaam. You know Balaam? How Balak asked Balaam to curse Israel. Balaam, from the very onset, should not have gone to see Balak. But he was enticed. So, ministers, I know many of you are ministers of God. Some of you are uh, in shepherding ministry. Some of you are pastors. And we have some pastors, quite a number of pastors here. We have four new pastors actually during this time of pandemic. Pastor Darren. Pastor Darren. Okay. Pastor Susan, yes, Susan. Pastor Joe and Pastor Elaine, husband and wife. Okay. Pastor Anthony Rokina, I remember you, I can recognize you. We have pastors here. Come, stand up. There is a name of Jesus. And, uh, and uh, it's very hard to recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is very fast. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out. Okay, but welcome. Thank you. All the seats are almost filled. I think last minute there are some people who had to go for quarantine because their workplace was COVID-19. So they pastor. Like example, Dr. Saw. You know Dr. Saw? Dr. Saw last night. No, Anthony, you know Dr. Saw, right? Dr. Saw last night. Text me last minute and say there's a COVID 19 patient. She's a surgeon in her GH. One of the, uh, I think one of those people close. So everyone have to 
practice uh, social responsibility, they, are, they cannot go to the public. Yeah. We have some doctors here as well. So uh, we want to just keep, do what is right. Do what is right. I want to just come to this point. Let's, you know, put aside all the facade. Can we just put aside all the facade? Because this is urgent. I'm speaking to the ministers of God as well. I'm speaking to those who are listening outside of this hall as well. Let's put away the facade. Let's not play church anymore. Will you just allow God right now to purify, purify your intentions, purify your motives? Create in us a clean heart. Let us humble ourselves. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I continue. Nothing else matters more, people of God. Remember this. Then being in intimacy with my spirit this year. For I'm looking for humble and yielded hearts whom I will pour my glory upon. Walk in this key and you will see how the promises I have spoken in Isaiah 16 shall come upon you even in ways you cannot imagine. I tell you what, it's not late yet to humble. This year, many cities and many nations will be humbled with a deep behind. Will be humbled through circumstances and situations. Pray. Pray for your government leaders. Pray for your church leaders. Pray for your political leaders. Pray for all the leaders in decision making. Pray that, I tell you what to pray. Now, do you know that sometimes many Christians, the more they pray about something, about, about this party will win, that person will win, the more worse it become. You know why? Because God is not obliged to hear you. You are obliged to hear Him. Who is God? He is God. We are not. Okay? We, we cannot pray according to what we read in the news. Yeah, nothing wrong with reading news. I do read news as well. But we cannot pray according to our preference. God knows further. God sees further. God has His way. But you know what? The key is humbling. Because the moment we humble ourselves before His mighty hand, He will give grace. He will provide grace. He will, he will come with His ability. And He will... He was supply from heaven. What is best? Sometimes our, our mind is too finite. Sometimes our mind is too finite regarding that particular party, say in this nation, that particular political party has to win. But does the Lord say so? There are many things that we Christians, we got to learn to grow. We got to learn to yield and to flow. I know this world is, our current world is all about customer service. Customer is king. Now, when you, now, do you know that the Bible never says, go and make customers? You know, it's like, you no know, vending machine. Put coin in, you know, expect Coca-Cola. I want it, I, I want it now, Coca-Cola. If not Coca-Cola, if I got a Pepsi-Cola, or I want Pepsi Cola, I call it Coca Cola, just to balance things up. <laughs> You're not happy. Christians cannot. Jesus says, What? Go and make disciples. What is a disciple? Disciples are not customers, disciples are followers of Him, following with all their hearts. So the Lord. I mean, do you know that many people pray about a 
against this COVID-19. And the more, as they pray, as they pray, and things never happen. In fact, there's a new variant. You know what I mean? What is God trying to tell us? Let us humble ourselves. The Lord is calling His people to humble. Because with pride comes downfall. I think many Christians have become very proud in the, in the whole world. I, I cannot emphasize any more how important it is. This is the word of the Lord. This is God's heart, His spirit, His grief. He's calling for His people to humble. Because if we do not humble, if our, our, the people in our city or nation do not humble, they will be humbled by circumstances and situation. Now, I want to just go to the next one here. Arise and shine for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You see, there's a contrast there. For people, the darkness shall cover the earth. See, darkness covering the earth. Deep darkness to people. It's happening. It gets worse and worse. Do you know that even our soil quality deteriorates? Deteriorates as time goes by. Everything in this world deteriorates. True or not? Building will deteriorate. Places, land will deteriorate. Even soil quality will deteriorate after you use many times. Now, everything in this world will pass away. It will wither, it will deteriorate. But, in contrast, this is a time when if you humble, but the, no, many people proclaim this, proclaim this. Many people want outpouring, many people want revival. But there's one thing that the Lord just asked for. Don't worry about it. His visiting, his uh, outpouring and revival, all those stuff. That is his prerogative. Your part is humble. Your part is stay close. Your part is in intimacy with the Lord. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your light. You see, do you realize that? For your light, your light has come. Now I know this is talking about Israel. But we are all grafted in. We, we are spiritual Israel. Say with me, spiritual Israel. We are grafted in through our faith in what? Jesus Christ. We are grafted in. But you realize it. Personalize this this year. Your, you and I, your light has come. Glory, reason upon you. The Lord will arise over you. You, you are the spiritual Israel. His glory will be seen upon you. Gentiles shall come to your light. Now, let me explain here. The glory, the light, actually, now many people make this mistake. I've been studying about outpourings. I've been studying about, even in Malaysia, the Bakalala revival, Bakalala outpouring in Sarawak. I've been studying about the Argentinian revival in the 1980s. After the Falklands War, I've been studying about all those past, like what happened in Toronto, Pensacola, Brownsville, Welsh, many places. But do you know that this is one thing that you've got to understand? The Lord won't just pour the glory on the land, on that soil. The Lord poured the glory on you. You know why? Because you are not the temple. You are the one that contains the light and the glory of the Lord. True love. Amen. You are the one. Now when when you humble yourself, now that's the key. Because God will give grace. It means his supply. Supply of light. Supply of his glory. Not just wisdom. He will supply that on you when you humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. For God gives you grace. He resists the proud. It means he will stop. He will close the heaven door on those who are proud. You know, but sometimes there's, the, there's, there's, there's a price to pay when you 
humble. Because when you humble, it means you're yielded. When the Lord says so, you say so. When the Lord says no, you say no. So sometimes when people, your friends or whoever, invite you for this, invite you for that, but the Lord say no, or the Lord give you a dream, warn you, don't. But when you say no to your friend, you may lose them. You may lose, lose a friend, never mind. But you gain a friend. You gain a friend for Jesus. So sometimes when you humble, you will be seen like proud. You'll be seen like arrogant to the world. But when you humble, I say humble before the Lord. Are you still with me? Now, the glory of the Lord fall upon you because you are the temple. Somebody say the word temple. Now, when the glory of the Lord fall upon you, 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 all of us, now, whatever you touch, whatever you touch, even when you plant something, the plant will grow, even as arrogant will grow, so big, bigger than normal. It takes you. It's not about the land. Like imagine, in, in Penang, when the, the people who contain the glory, no more in Penang. It's not about Penang anymore. It's not about glory on Penang. It's on you and because of you, the land experience. I declare that there's going to be an outpouring. Now, it's not just about revival. I don't like to use the word revival. Revival means, yeah, there's a place for revival, don't get me wrong. Revival means something that happened before and it revived. I tell you what, it's not revival. Penang is not going to experience revival. Penang is going to experience outpouring. It's a fresh, it's a fresh outpouring. It's a new recording that you have never seen before. It's not something that you want to think of whatever happened in Francis' life cycle. It's a new. It's something that no eye has seen, no ear heard. No has entered into the hearts of men what God has in store. And that's the reason why the Lord calls us in Kinect to prepare you, Kinectites. We are not Kinectites. The Lord told us, no. You can't even own a house in Kinect. Not because we are not able. We can, we sold our house in here, but to come here like a Levite to prepare the Penang for the glory. And when the glory comes, I have to take a step back and let Penang people take over. I'm here to just call, call us here to restore because when we first came to Penang, there's so, so many broken lives, broken deacons, broken elders, broken pastors, broken Christians. I, I praise the Lord that many have been restored. There are things that have been clipped, have been unclipped, and they can saw again. Many of many of you have your own ministry now, on your own autonomy. This is an apostolic ministry. We don't run like a local church. It's an apost we have been trying to say this again and again all these years. But we, we, as a people, we are a church of course, because church is a people. Church is not a club. Church is not an organization or what, or building. Wherever we are, we are church. Amen. Now, this is one area that God is shaking. God is causing many ministers of God, pastors, to see something since last year. Because many places all over the world, they cannot meet anymore in person because of COVID-19. Many people have to meet from house to house. Many things are returning back to the book of Acts. God has gone full circle. He began from the book of Acts. He will return in that way. Christians are going to suffer many persecutions, more and more, not just from religious extremism, but from how about the new age? How about the secularism? How about the same-sex marriage people? All kinds of persecution. No wonder Jesus says this in the last days. The world will hate you. The world will hate you. But if they hate you, they are actually hating me, Jesus says. You got to prepare. Last year was a year of preparation. Last year was a year for me of a transitioning. Transitioning. There's a lot of transitioning happening. But this year is a year that God is calling you to humble. God is calling you to purify. God is calling you to just clear away anything that's not supposed to be there. And God is also calling His ministers and ministries. Forget about money. Don't think about that. Look to me. And 
when you embrace him to humble yourself to walk in his blueprint you don't have to worry god is going to move people to fall to you if you are in ministry in, in the same thing if you're in business what in that talent that god has given to you what in the spiritual gift that god has given to you in the marketplace and when the world becomes more crooked you know nowadays there are a lot of conflict because desperate people do desperate things because many people are having pay cut jobless all over the world but you don't compromise you stay true to the lord and that's what we call as faithful remnants never mind if you see all the bad news all the some of these things happening but you will be the light is falling upon you for penang don't talk about revival you have nothing to revive i'm not going to revive francis light you know with all due respect i know penang has long history i want to tell you very very specially there will be a fresh outpouring like penang has not seen before you better be ready You better be ready. Okay? This is the beginning of that preparation. The glory of the Lord. See, a fresh outpouring happens like the book of Acts chapter 2. Never happened before. Remember Acts chapter 2? Never happened before. Tongues of fire came upon all these people and for the first time, they began to speak in tongues. Never happened before. Now, that's exactly what God told me about Penang. Get ready. There will be fresh outpouring. It will be fresh. Amen. It's not something that you're reading. I know. I know. I know. Some people they really go back to Bakalalan in Sarawak where Papa uh, Uncle Bangau used to be the revivalist. Used to be a channel where uh, he he began to just uh, say position yourself so all the villagers were there. And that day, that night when. Everyone's positioning themselves. They saw fireball just fall. And the glory of the even Straits Times reporter was there and got saved. The presence of the Lord, the awesome presence. But you must know, before that, there's a lot of grumbling. That village was one of the dirtiest in the whole Sarawak. That village was so filthy. So many people died. Because of sicknesses. It, but it's, it's, it's during a time when some of these people, the real warriors, real warriors, take note, come before the Lord, humble yourself. To humble is to bend your knees before the Lord in total submission, to totally you and surrender, to worship, worship leaders, worshippers, many of you. To worship is to surrender. Worship is surrender, not your view. His will is when they begin to humble sincerely. They begin to cry. God move. See, you don't have to try to uh, move the hand of God. God is looking at your heart. God is moving your heart. See, let's get this right. A fresh outpouring. A fresh outpouring. Fear not, Pinan. Don't worry. If you are good, if you are going to be bullied by other states around you, and that's already started to happen. But there's something very special about Pinan. Okay, the Lord will know how to guard, protect, because He's getting this ready. Now I've said this many times in the past. Why the Lord called me out of all the places? And the Lord said this, because many new moves, many great moves from now onwards, it's going to start from Penang. It won't start from East Malaysia anymore. His time and season has passed. With all due respect, we learn a lot. We, we were learning a lot from the shoulders of East Malaysia outpouring. Penang has the greatest liberty in the spirit, keep worshiping. 
Let's, let's raise up our hands right now. Just, just keep worshiping. Just, if you're not from Penang, I know some of you, you're not. Can you just, just bless on them? Just, just prepare. Oh yes, Father God, not only for us as individuals, but let this light and glory fall on Penang, on Penangites. Somebody say Amen. Amen. That's what I want to say about Penang. Yeah. Um, next one, I'm going to go very quickly because uh, I need to ask the worship team to come and uh, we need to emphasize more ministry. Now, remember this, after you have been ministered to, you can make your way home, okay? Alright? Uh, if you need to leave, okay? But I want, to, I want to try to pray for family by family, ministry by ministry. Uh, I want to try, I want to believe that Pastor Chen and I, we can pray for every one of you before you leave. Everyone, individually, family by family. Okay? If you come as a family, come as a family and to be prayed for. Yeah? After you have been prayed for, uh, you can go. Okay? Uh, and uh, we'll keep in touch. We'll keep in touch. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn uh, from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and for, will forgive their sin and heal their land. You know this verse very well. But I'm bringing you not just to verse 14. Many people just read verse 14. I'm bringing you particularly to verse 15. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. Okay? When we humble, that will happen. So some people think, God send us revival, God send us this. They've been praying for 10 years, 20 years. But I'll tell you what, God is saying this to you. Will you modify? Will you just say, God, I'm sorry Lord, for the things I've made it. This year I want to get close to you, closer and closer. Closer than ever before. In deepest.
Go back to the closeness of God. Amen. If you have been despised, same thing. See, all these promises, no people may be claiming all these promises. I am claiming that too. But the Lord said, the Lord taught me this. You can claim and claim and claim and claim. But there's one key that you must understand when you claim this. Closeness to God. Intimacy. Humility. That's all. My message today is super simple. But it's so, so important. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Worship me, can you just come to the front right now? Just point of view. Jim can start with the with the keyboard first. We continue very quickly. And all these things we will be put up on site and we on the website. Uh, salvation and praise. Continue next one. Righteousness. You are the branch is the wine. Uh, a little one shall be. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know why I don't feel like preaching further. Um, because today, the reason why I'm here is not so much for preaching, especially in times like this. I was talking to the other day I was fellowshipping with uh, Penang Christian Church, a uh, Penang Christian Center, PCC Master, Pastor Isaac, we were fellowshipping in the So we were agreeing, we were agreeing, we were saying that uh, since March, since this pandemic began, sheep is like everywhere. <laughs> everybody is free for all, everybody can listen to anybody's food masters preaching from all over the world. They are so spoiled for choice regarding preachings. <laughs> so they can listen to any pastor, any preaching, because almost everyone put up their preachings <laughs> uh, online. Yeah? So it's not so much about preaching. You know, sometimes knowledge puff up. You can be just sitting there. Uh, please uh, tell the person next to you. Don't be angry with Pastor Ken. <laughs> I tell you what. You can be sitting there. Absorbing, correcting, notes after notes, preaching after preaching, tremendous preaching, powerful preaching, anointed preaching, correcting knowledge. But do you know what the Bible says? Knowledge marks up. Nothing wrong as a Bible teacher, as a former dean in the Bible college. Nothing wrong. I also study a lot. In fact, I spent 10 years. Not because I fail all the time, you know. The first three years I study, the next seven years I teach, and later on, uh, the last, I mean, the, the, within the seven years, the last two years I became team. Okay? But one thing I realized is that I felt that the Holy Spirit is grieved. I felt that many people go from place to place, listen from servant to servant. A lot of knowledge. This is an end time. Knowledge run to and fro. But what God wants is uh, this family time. Okay? I, know all, I know all of you because we have been one side. Okay?
有一个朋友哈出来的。It's not about accumulating knowledge or the best riches. Don't bring pastors compete with one another. Who is number one preacher? Who is number two preacher? Who is the best? This is not American top forty. This is kingdom of God. Can we just open our hearts and just say, God? Most important thing is not about this pastor who is preaching better, who is more anointed, who is meeting is more anointed. This and that. Let us put aside all these childish things. Let us begin with ourselves. No. Storage. 
Why not sir? Why not sir? Sunshine, why not sir? Sam goes away, why not sir? Oh, I'm Toshima, you are Samsung, and I'm uh, and, and you, and, and the other one is uh, uh, Hitachi. Now, the world thrives on this. The world is taken, the world is like uh, swayed by the prince of the power of the air, the Bible says. Because they operate from scarcity of resources. One kick, everybody fight. But you know that, no, I've been walking in the supernatural. Because God has revealed to me, you have more, I can have more too. No problem. Because in His kingdom, in His spiritual realm, there's no limit. Amen. There's no scarcity of resources. There's no scarcity. It's unlimited. It's infinite. Amen. Now, this is also a year that God has super rich grace for His people to walk into entrepreneurship. Now, when I say entrepreneurship, it's not about no, just because everybody doing that. You also do that. No, I'm not talking about copycat. I'm talking about you humble yourself. God is going to give you wisdom and revelation. God is going to give you that and God is going to just give you the blueprint. So unique. You will be at the cutting edge. And no one, you cannot even find in some textbooks. I want you to be receive this. If, if, if you are in entrepreneurship, if you are in any business, yeah, or if you are planning to start a business of entrepreneurship, anything, any industry, as long as what, that's what God spoke to you, there's very rich grace for you to for Christians, because His light has shine, His glory has come. Very rich place. Just do not be a copycat. Just seek Him. You will be so unique. You will find your panache. You will find your cutting edge. You will get your niche. Receive this in the name of Jesus. And I pray right now, just lift up your hands that whatever you touch, just like when you have the glory of the Lord, the light of the Lord, even when you plant something, the plant grow well. Receive this in Jesus' name. Receive this right now. God is touching your hands right now. Whatever you put your hands on to do, shall be blessed. Receive. Fear not regarding your future. Fear not. But 
mark this words. There's going to be some changes and shifting, but it's going to be shifting to something very new, shifting to something that is going to just catapult you into something, into the next level. You may not understand fully, but God is saying this to you. He's getting you ready. Continue to humble yourselves. Continue to feed. Continue to feed your sheep. And the Lord is saying this to you, right, Trent? I'm giving you this mantle. I'm giving this, you this mantle. You'll be guarding, both of you, now husband and wife can hold hands. You'll be guarding. You'll be guarding the main land of the land spiritually. Never underestimate. Never underestimate. I want to believe when there's all pouring coming to Penang, the main land will not be forgotten. I know many people focus more on the island. But province Wellesley, that's the whole name, right? Province Wellesley. Sabran Prime. God has not forgotten it. God has not forgotten it. You will be the spiritual. You will be praying. Now, you can pray for nation, you can pray for many things. But God is specifically saying this to you. I'm putting you there. I'm planting you there. Receive this in Jesus' name. By faith. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Now, if you have been prayed for, you can just hang around. Okay? In the back. But if, uh, you, because of social distancing, Thank you for coming. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So then, uh, so then, I know that's supposed to left until Amen. Thank you, Jesus. After you have been praying for, you can just hang around. There's a big area in the foyer that you can just uh, fellowship, of course, practice social distancing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The rest of you, if you have to give up, thanks, just keep praying.